Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Disney's Ticket and Transportation Center and today the Epcot monorail reopens. I am so excited to look down and see all inside Future World or what's left of Future World and take a nice grand circle tour of the park and also enjoy a nice ride on the highway in the sky. Anywho's, let's go do this. We're not just going to ride the monorail, we're gonna actually hang out in Epcot, but I'm so excited to be able to see things that normally we haven't been able to see for a while because the monorail's been down and the walls have been up in Epcot, and just actually enjoy the ride because this is my favorite monorail line. It has such a nice scenic view and it's the longest one actually of all of them. Now this monorail itself is a direct service to Epcot and from Epcot to the TTC. The other monorail line will actually take you around the Magic Kingdom Resort Loop and this one is just literally Epcot and back and that's it. And it's really, really fun. The hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Direct service to Epcot and I'm hoping we get monorail red. That would be fancy. I have been always obsessed with Disney World transportation ever since the first time I came here. I don't know why. It's such a strange thing to actually be obsessed with. Walt was obsessed with transportation. That's why he has monorails, people movers, trains. He loved it all. And I guess we share that passion. Oh, look. Here it is. It's not monorail red, but it's monorail silver. Hi-ho, silver. <laughs> this is awesome. I also like the little uh, command station over there. It's very, very fancy. Now they are still requiring face masks to be worn on the monorail transportation. It also looks like they took down all the barriers since the last time I was on here. Very fancy. <laughs> For your safety and the safety of others around you, please wear your face coverings while on the monorail. Thank you and welcome aboard Monorail Silver. Looks like we're leaving Magic Kingdom. Isn't that so cool? Oh, here we go. We're making it to Epcot. I'm so excited to see all inside Future World because like I said, we couldn't be able to see it before. This is the first time. be able to see a little bit of the construction for Guardians of the Galaxy. There's so many things. <laughs> I just want to look at everything. Wow. We have arrived at Epcot. <laughs> that is amazing, isn't it? Oh, 
so happy this is back. Everyone's excited to take their mask off too. It feels so good to say, yeah, I took the monorail over to Epcot and now we can hang out here for a little bit. And guess what? I just thought about this. We can hop to Magic Kingdom with ease. Like we don't have to actually go through parking or buses or anything like that. We can just literally take the monorail right back to Magic Kingdom, making park hopping so much easier. That sounds like a perfect idea. We're gonna hang out at Epcot, try some food and wine, and then hop over to Magic Kingdom. And look, as we're speaking, here comes the monorail. Oh, wow, I'm sorry. I know a lot of people probably don't get as excited about monorails as I do, but this is a big thing. Like, this is a big thing for me. I also noticed we have some friends greeting guests as they're walking into Epcot, and it's not Mickey and Minnie, it's somebody different. It's Goofy and Pluto, but it looks like everyone's like gathering around to say hi to Goofy. What about my pal Pluto right here? Us dogs gotta stick together. <laughs> What's up? Oh, I love your little whiskers, they're very springy. Look at that, that's amazing. <laughs> it might be a little hot out today, but I think I'm ready for a double header. A little two park action. We're gonna go Epcot and then Magic Kingdom and use the monorail to get us back and forth and I love it. I am super <laughs> excited if you can't tell. <laughs> I'm gonna head straight back to World Showcase and try a couple of food and wine boots that I didn't try on opening day. And I'm excited because like I said, this is something that we can revisit multiple times until the festival ends because it's almost so big you can't get it all done without multiple trips. One of the stands I wanted to actually visit while I was here was Australia because they have the grilled sweet and spicy bushberry shrimp, which looked phenomenal. And then also I might be looking at getting the Cooper's Brewery original pale ale. I think I had that last year, but this spicy shrimp, well, sweet and spicy shrimp looked amazing. One of the most consistent things when it comes to Food and Wine Festival is finding places to actually eat your food and drink. Uh, last time I was here, I was discussing how hard it is. I ended up eating a donut underneath a monorail track. I ate on a brick wall, of course, the trash cans. And today, we lucked out and we made friends with a Disney Vacation Club cast member. And now we're gonna hide out over here and eat some food at the stand. Look at how nice this is. Nice and AC'd, well, a little bit of a fan and I think some air conditioning. And then I got my shrimp and my uh, Cooper's beer right here. Looking all fancy and delicious. Wow, that actually looks so good. I hope it's not too spicy. I mean, it kind of looks like it's a, a good medium, but we'll find out. A nice little shrimp on the bobby. That is so good. And you can really taste that pineapple and it's a little bit of a medium it's not too spicy not too sweet just the way i like it now i got to try this beer a little cooper's pale ale and cheers to the epcot monorail don't want to spill it a little bit there but oh, oh that's good that's a good one that's good <laughs> the only sad thing is is it's six dollars for three shrimp three shrimp and then you actually get the snow peas and your pineapple chutney or whatever sauce that is but I would like to see a little bit more shrimp in there you know now that I got my shrimps I'm gonna hop over to Hawaii I really didn't even get a good look at what they're actually having on the menu this year but I always want to get something from there because it's a Hawaii booth and it's actually really nicely decorated if you want to see more food and wine stuff, I posted my video just about like two days ago for the opening day, and I actually had something to eat or drink at seven different booths, so I got a big variety of things. Now today I'm probably not going to do as much because I do want to head over to Magic Kingdom, but I am going to focus on the things that I didn't do in that video. So if you want to check that out, I'll put the link in the description so you can look at it, and uh, yeah, see what they got at Hawaii. Oh, looks like we've got a Kahlua pork slider with sweet and sour dole pineapple chutney, and then teriyaki glazed spam hash, a tuna poke, a passion fruit cheesecake. It looks like I may have attracted some attention from the local birds, and uh, I think they're trying to get my food. It looks delicious, so I don't blame them, but kind of gets a little nervous when there's birds swooping down at you as you're trying to eat. They're literally just sitting there watching. And I don't blame them, like I said, because it does look delicious. I ended up getting 
the Kula pork slider with the pineapple chutney. Now, I didn't get the mayonnaise with it. I'm not a big fan of mayonnaise. And also, I got the teriyaki spam hash. That I also got without the mayonnaise. But this has potatoes, spam, peppers, onions. And it all looks just so amazing, doesn't it? I like this chutney, though. So I don't know which one to start first. Maybe with the uh, little slider. Oh, Lord, they're coming in hot. Holy moly, there's a lot of them. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> This actually looks very delicious. Now, it's all just uh, pork and then the chutney. No sauce on here at all. And that's the way it is, should be, I feel like. Yeah, look at that. That is a really, really good slider. And it's very soft. It's like a King's Hawaiian roll. I love King's Hawaiian rolls. I get them whenever I go to Publix. They even give them for meals if you buy like a meal at the uh, deli. And it's just so delicious. And making little sandwiches out of it is the perfect mix. Now I think it's time to dive in to the uh, teriyaki spam hash. And look at that. Lots and lots of potatoes. I'm not seeing much spam. Oh wait, here's a spam. And then here's a potato. They kind of look similar because they're both cubed. But yeah, this is a good portion. A little bit of everything on one fork. We got the hash, we got the spam, we got the peppers and onions. And we're going right in. Oh wow. This is really, really good. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh wow. And for the, the price and the value and the size, this is up there with the porchetta for me, I have to say. This is so, so good. It's got the perfect potatoes O'Brien taste to it with a little teriyaki and spam, and I love it. And now for the beer, it's an IPA, and uh, I've already taken a sip, but I, I, I think I like the other one a little bit better. I like the Cooper's one. I'm not too big on the IPAs though. Some of them are really good. This isn't too hoppy. I just don't like the aftertaste, you know? But that right there, I will definitely get again. I'm gonna enjoy eating the rest of it and it's gonna be on my favorites. Now I think it's time we head back towards Future World, hop the Epcot monorail and take it back to the Magic Kingdom and then uh, take a little stroll down Main Street USA. This is such an adventurous day. I'm like having a, an amazing time just coming out and enjoying both parks and the Epcot monorail. So happy. Before I hop on the monorail, I think I'm gonna grab myself maybe a coffee from Joffrey's. And also I noticed they have a new monorail sign. Like they've gotten rid of that old Epcot. Almost all of it's gone out of the park and the new monorail sign represents the new font. And I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. For me, I like the new Epcot font. Well, it's kind of like a retro new Epcot font. And I'll show you two examples of it. And you let me know in the comments which one you prefer. But like I said, the old one is almost all phased out. This is the new Epcot font, and you see it's kind of like everywhere. So it's going all around the park, and the new monorail sign itself is actually in that font. But right over here underneath the monorail sign, you can see the old Epcot font. This is the older Epcot font, and like I said, this is almost all phased out of the park. I mean, everywhere else you see all the new signs are kind of with this lowercase font, and I like it. Still getting used to seeing that actually happen. Wow. <laughs> Look at her go. Now I got myself a shaken Jamaican cold brew and it's time to catch the monorail. It's definitely playing the old Epcot music on here too. Look at here comes the monorail about to make its grand circle around Epcot. This is so awesome. And plus you get that beautiful view right there. Isn't that amazing? the chances we got monorail silver again it's like our lucky monorail today I remember the first time riding the monorail I always used to look at the water thinking I would see an alligator has anybody else ever done that 
I was obsessed. Every time I rode the monorail, I just constantly looked down and just tried to spot myself an alligator. Because at that time, I didn't live in Florida, so it wasn't like a, you know, a thing that I would normally see, and it's something I would want to see. From the Epcot monorail to the Magic Kingdom monorail. <laughs> It's definitely a little shock to get used to wearing masks again. I normally wouldn't be taking the monorail, but it's because I haven't been able to. And uh, yeah, I kind of feel like a monorail kind of day. Now, if I wanted to take the ferry boat, I wouldn't have to wear the mask. But since we're all about Epcot monorail today, gotta show love to Magic Kingdom as well. I may say that Epcot has my favorite monorail line, but I gotta say, this is my favorite view from the monorail. Look at that. Seriously, what a special day here today with the clouds. Holy moly, in the castle. And then we're getting a oh, good look at Space Mountain. I love walking into Magic Kingdom with a certain type of music. Right now we got some Mary Poppins happening. Let's go fly a kite up to the highest height let's go fly a kite and here we are we made it to the most magical place on earth oh wow look and we get to see tinkerbell as soon as we walk in that's magical you can fly you can fly <laughs> I think I'm gonna head straight back to the Philhar Magic. That was one of the main reasons I wanted to come over here today. I want to see those new scenes that they have. Mickey's Philhar Magic has always been one of my favorite attractions. I mean, I love just the 4D, and then I love getting sprayed in the face with like the champagne and the Beauty and the Beast scene. It's really, really good. But take a look at that castle. Oh, looks like we got another cavalcade coming through. Left or right, left or right, right, right. I'm going pick this a way. Side, pick, a pick a side, pick a side. I'm going over here. <laughs> That is so fun to be able to see Pluto in two parks in the same day. They travel pretty quickly, faster than I can actually. And if we're going to fill her magic, might as well walk right through the castle. Isn't she a beaut, Clark? Here's a little fun trivia. I remember coming here and getting a fast pass for Phil R. Magic, and sometimes I would get a bonus fast pass. Like, I'm talking about paper ones. Let me know in the comments if you know what bonus paper fast pass we used to get. I think it'll be fun to see who knows. And now it's time Mickey's Phil Her Magic, a concert for the eyes and ears. Maestro Mickey is going to put on one heck of a show, and it's presented by Kodak. Kodak. I didn't even know that existed anymore. We're gonna need to pick up some safety glasses for this show. Things can get quite dangerous out there. They do look very stylish though, I have to say. I love the theater in here, it's so nice. I would love to have like a nice movie theater with the gold like trim and like the blue curtains. Actually, one of the uh, really unique houses that I stayed in had a replica uh, movie theater in their house, the same theming as the Philhar Magic, and I thought it was amazing. No kidding, this was like the theming of the theater. I think it was the Happily Ever After estate. I don't know, I have to look for it. I can't remember which one it was. I actually went to so many of them, but this is exactly what their home theater looked like in their house. They had this nice gold trim and the blue and the carpets. It was very nice. Look at this. <laughs>
that was a little bit of a shocker. I guess we can chalk that up to uh, Nathan read something but didn't actually read it completely because the new Philhar Magic doesn't start here in Disney World for quite a while. It debuted in Disneyland uh, yesterday, but not here. So I must have just read new Philhar Magic and I was like, well, excuse me, I gotta go check this out. And uh, yeah, no. It, wasn't here but I still absolutely enjoyed it it's still a wonderful show but I, I, I feel like I've been hyped up about this all day long so then when I got here and like it didn't actually like no new scene happened I was kind of like what happened what did I miss you know <laughs> I guess things just happen like that I can honestly say though it's okay I'm happy I ended up coming over to the Magic Kingdom anyway I mean look at this it's such a beautiful day to be here in Florida, in Disney World. Look at all of the happy people on Main Street USA. And yeah, it was great coming over here. <laughs> and I guess with that, we're going to call it a day here. It's been fun hopping around the parks, going from Epcot to Magic Kingdom. The new Epcot monorail reopening today. That was really fun. A little let down because of Coco, but that's my fault. I mean, it's not that I'm let down. It's just uh, I feel like I've been bamboozled by myself. So uh, next time I'll have to read the full article. I wish I was in Disneyland and then the problem would be fixed. But anywho's, I enjoyed the journey and I hope you enjoyed the video because I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.